topic we're going to talk about now is revolutionising and managing the learning environment in the digital stage. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, my, my story goes back to the first uh, digital event held here in the Celtic Manor back in 2012. Uh, I was a head teacher at the time. Um, the school I was head teacher of in Swansea, we were the first school to adopt mobile device technology for every child in Key Stage 2. And that was built on outstanding teaching and learning back in 2010. Um, did a lot of work with uh, Minister Rose, Rose, both with Leighton Andrews and Hugh Lewis as the professional digital advisor. And 14 months ago, decided to leave all those posts uh, and set up a company called Aspire to Be, which is why I'm here today. Um, Aspire to Be is an edtech company. Um, based in Pencoid, we have two offices, one in Pencoid, one in, in Leithwood Talbot. Uh, and our four key products are, as you can see, on the stage there. The first thing we do, uh, we can offer to schools and organisations is something called an EdTech review. So we come into schools and basically we are your independent line in the sand movement. Because uh, you guys will know if you're based in education, there's a whole host of schools over the last five years have gone out and procured a huge amount of kit without perhaps necessarily the right teaching and learning and pedagogy built alongside it or even with it. So I'd say 75% of our work with our EdTech review is sort of retrospective, is rewinding and saying, have you got the right things in place before you even start adopting using the tech? Following on from that, the second one then is CPD. So CPD model works across um, many different platforms and really it depends on what that review throws up as to what the CPD looks like. The third one is the one which we're going to talk and present about today. Uh, and if you'd like to come down to our stand after the presentation, we stand 17. Uh, we'll actually have some live eye beacons there we'll be able to show you and you can interact with as well. Uh, and the fourth one, uh, for me as an ex-head and government advisor, is a key one. Uh, you would have heard over the last two days a lot of people, including the Deputy Minister for Skills, talking about the computing curriculum. I was part of the ICT steering group who sort of helped shape that, uh, and the Donaldson report, which has come out now, has got that nailed, I believe. Uh, but the issue you've got, obviously, with 1,700 schools in Wales is around 20,000 teachers will have no experience in teaching that. And if you look at that report carefully, it does clearly outline it isn't just about teaching programming and computing in ICT. It's about your geography teacher, your French teacher, your PE teacher using those skills cleverly across the whole curriculum. Now, again, if you're from an education background, you guys will know that is a huge challenge for the country. It's one we can achieve and one we can do, but it's one we need to get right. So that programme there, the Aspire Ed programme, uh, we're an accredited organisation in Wales where we teach teachers how to teach computing. So we don't try and make the teacher an expert in computing, because, again, 80% of teachers never will be experts in computing. However, like I said earlier, the geography teacher still has to be able to use those skills effectively. So it's a 10 module based programme. You can choose any of the 10 modules. We've actually shaped those 10 modules into four, which we believe are really important for Wales currently. And if you get those four accreditations, so it's one day face to face, the rest is all online. So we've partnered up with CDSM, uh, obviously who run Hub. We've partnered up with them and basically it'll be an online portal where you can have the tutor advice, the webinars, everything built in through there. And we're actually gonna build in digital badges at the end of that. So they're accredited uh, through that system as well. For me, that's a key piece for Wales if we get that right. Uh, early adopters of that, uh, Monmouthshire County Council. So Monmouthshire have got us in, we're working across two clusters as a pilot, which is fantastic, uh, with a view to doing that across uh, all of the authority. Um, the, both the EAS as a consortia and Central South, we're working with both of those and putting some programmes in place, hopefully to run from September. The guy to my left, uh, Rhys Cochran is from Mary Market High School and Rhys has been piloting uh, what we're going to talk about this morning, or this afternoon, sorry, uh, the iBeacon technology. I'm not going to speak any further about it because Rhys will come on and actually talk about how it's impacted in his school. Needless to say, uh, it's Bluetooth technology. Uh, if you've got mobile devices in your school, either Android or um, iOS, this technology can be built in, operates over Bluetooth, and basically it can, be, it can transform your learning environments. It's not only the, the education sector we work with, uh, the five pilots we've run uh, across Wales currently are there. So Bajend Library, Mary Market High School, um, Dufferin Taff, which is a school down in Whitland, their gymnasium area, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, Chepstow Leisure Centre uh, and Chepstow Comprehensive School. We've also got inquiries currently, meetings with Everton Football Club, St Helens Rugby League Club, Northampton Saints and Leicester Tigers. So for what I'd call a, a very fastly growing Welsh company, uh, the iBeacon technology is one of the products which has really taken off very quickly. 
So I'll hand over to, uh, to Rhys, who will, uh, will talk about um, how Rhys has used them within his school. Rhys has currently had uh, an Eston inspection recently as well. Uh, he'll touch upon that, and I'll come back at the end of the presentation. Right, let me tell you a little bit about Macler School and where we've come from over the last sort of five or six years. About seven years ago, we were looking at special measures and, and closing, really. And then through a uh, change in management and sort of a teaching strategy, we've really sort of improved. And we've, we're probably one of the most improved schools in Wales now, not only Cardiff. Um, and we did say a recent inspection, we was the best inspection we've had. I can't really go into the details of that, but it'll be, it'll be on report very soon. Um, we've got quite a challenge in group of individuals, of students. We've got 33% free school meals. Um, and growing, we've got around 700 students on road at the moment. And a part of our self-improvement plan was e-learning. Um, so about two years ago, we thought a great idea would be buy iPads. Obviously, everyone got them at the moment. They must, they must work, they must change education. So we bought 40 iPads. And after playing with them and using them for over a year, we found we had no direction. We didn't know what to do with them, and it was, it was a real danger them just ending up maybe being left on the shelf with, with a load of books. So we sat down with Simon and Aspire to be, and we sort of found a direction. So by, by the eye beacons, we got our sort of direction on where we want to go with them. So as a trial, we um, developed a bespoke app with Simon and the team, and using the beacons, we wanted to focus on a geography teacher, we wanted to focus on just one group of students to see how effective it could be. So we looked at GCSE geography and delivering a topic within that subject uh, remotely just through the, the, the beacon and the, and the app. Uh, we thought it was a great opportunity for revision, something our students find good challenging, accessing the material outside of school. By having these beacons dotted around the school, they can access information whenever they really want. Um, Obviously, literacy is a massive thing in schools right now, and we thought there was a real opportunity there as well to improve the provision we've got for our students in that area. And again, our access away from the classroom was the big thing we were looking at. And we also wanted it to be a learning tool for staff, so they could use it like they would use anything, like, like a projector, like a computer. We wanted to make the, the Apple devices they've got more used to them, and the Beacon allows us to do that. So the Beacon, what we did with it is we focused on GCSE geography, and we delivered the whole subject, as I said, through the beacon. And it was when our lesson of starters, our plenaries, our tasks were all transmitted via the beacon at different periods throughout the lesson. That all increased the engagement massively, and students were really coming on board, and they wanted to become involved, and they were interested. And it made it more independent, more individual. Um, in geography, we obviously have many different case studies. So if we're learning about a volcanic eruption or a flood, we like to give our students a range of information. There's a lot of content involved, and obviously different abilities they, they need more challenging work compared to students who don't. So via the beacon, we have beacons around the classroom, so that beacon would give you maybe a more challenging case study compared to one which is a bit more accessible for students. So we found that we were able to cater for more students easily and removing the stigma as well. When we had things dotted around the classroom, so we had, you know, there's a pile of worksheets there for you if you find it quite challenging. They didn't really want to go for them, they didn't want to show that. Using the beacon is a lot more subtle and students tend to go on with the work a lot easier and and it's proved really, really beneficial. And, and like I said, the engagement among the students, and I'll talk about the impacts later on as well. Um, as I said, differentiation, we use it a lot for that. We traffic light all our resources. We've sort of traffic lighted our beacons, so they know that that, was, that beacon is going to be a lot more accessible than other beacons. Um, in schools, as, as you all of you should, might know, learning maths, everyone's got them now. We've got a numeracy map, we've got a literacy map, we've got a peer assessment map, we've got a map for everything. Um, and they grate the big A3 things, they're colourful, they go on the desk and you use them all three or four times and they end up on the shelf gathering dust. We found that they weren't becoming effective anymore. But by using the beacon and the app, we actually were able to put all those mats in one area for the students' success in their own free will. Um, and it's had massive impacts in terms of the literacy and the improvements of what they're doing. It, it, I can't really describe it, so you have to see it. The amount of work they're creating, they're actually going back over it, reviewing their work, looking at these different prompts they've got on these learning mats, whereas before, they were just on the table. They didn't really take notice of them. Same with our displays. They're great, they're great displays, they're very visual, but as soon as you put it on the front of them in an iPad via the, via the beacons, they come to life, and they actually want to take notice of them. Um, literacy, we've got a very good literacy coordinator in school. We're doing quite a lot of things, very active particularly in form time and registration, where they're sort of doing how-tos and how to improve it, different elements of the LNF. But how do they access that outside the classroom? After for registration, how do they access it when they're in geography, in history, in, 
in Welsh even. So what this beacon allows you to do is to do that. So they've got a beacon within the classroom and then there's a literacy support. So maybe you could quickly mark a piece of work and say that's really good, but you need to look, look at maybe the way you use apostrophes. By using the beacon, they can access that part of the apostrophes then and review the work and improve it. Um, textbooks, again, we've sort of put the textbooks via the beacon. So when they go into history now, the beacon will send a message to their phones or via their tablet and they will have the, the, that history textbook. So it means it, it cuts on on, on buying all the textbooks, so ma massive cost saving things. Same with the learning match, really. We've saved a massive amount of money by putting our resources via the beacon. And obviously, as a policy in the school, we have progress checks every 15 minutes. That can be quite difficult to do. By using the beacons, we can send out a progress check to the students who then come back to us and say, well, this is what I've learned so far. I click that on our computers or on our tablets, and we can sort of assess our lesson and then whether we want to progress on or we want to review what we've just done. So in terms of the impact, and I mentioned it already, the engagement from the students has been massive. They have really, really sort of taken it on board. The amount of work they're producing has doubled, and the quality they're producing is also really impressive. Um, in terms of extended writing, we've got, we've got students using the literacy support to make sure that they, they, it's, it's more legible, um, using a wide variety of uh, language and using the right punctuation, things they weren't doing before. And again, it, it just because it's more independent for them, it's there in front of them. They want to work harder. They want to try a little bit more effort into it. And they're proud of what they're producing as well. And I think the Beacons have done that because it's sort of, you know, giving that information and making sure they do it. They're accessing it because we are driving it towards them. The differentiation, sorry, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> um, opportunities for independent learning, again, that has been something we've really found challenging in the last couple of years, because we've come a long way over a short period of time. We've done that maybe through teacher-led activities, and you know, our, our staff have worked really hard. We've got to a point now where our students are finding it difficult to work independently. The beacons are allowing that. They're actually taking that time now, and they, they do work on their own. They're coming into like, our library and using the beacons in their own time. The fact they've got this app, which is there just for them, for their school, they can access it at home, is very, very powerful. And they've got that opportunity now, which they didn't have before. And for our students who come from challenging backgrounds, they appreciate that. Um, in terms of the results, I've said it's improved GCSE results. It's improved class GCSE results in terms of the class tests we've got. When we compare it against um, the topics we've taught without this technology, there's quite a substantial increase in the passing of the C grades and things like that. Um, we're hoping it can have a long-term impact in terms of the GCSEs they've just sat. Again, it's a superb way for staff to effectively monitor progress and see exactly what way we, how, we, how the students are doing. Can we do, step in right now? Can we, we can access things here? Um, the literacy scores have improved across year seven, and specifically with the digital leaders, we worked with a group of them to really set the beacons up, and it's given them another direction as well. They're actually now around the school promoting the beacons with staff, and it's, it's really, really exciting where it's going to go. And Estin came in recently, as Simon said, and they recognise this, and they sort of, you know, they sort of seen it as sector leading. They see that this is the future, and they were excited by the possibilities. Although it's just a very early phase right now, they could see that, where this could go. So in terms of how you could use it and the possibilities for it, they are endless. There are endless opportunities, and I find it exciting as a teacher and motivated that every day I can go in and find some way, new, some new way of using the beacons. The beacons can transmit anything you want to. So whether it's a PowerPoint, whether it's a Word document, whether it's a website, you name it, and you can do that. And that's what's exciting about it. So we use it for solo taxonomy at the moment, because obviously those students can uh, move at different levels of learning throughout the lesson, and that allows you to do it very easily. You do the work beforehand, and then you access the different beacon then to, access to, to achieve the different levels of learning through the lesson. Uh, again, I mentioned differentiation a lot. We're using the LNF support there, so they've got those those PowerPoints, those videos, those tutorials on how to improve different uh, aspects. Um, we are looking now to include the student planner via it and notifications to students so they know what's going on in the school, the day-to-day -day life of the school. Uh, again, because of the app, and we focus on the literacy, we want to make the parental contact better, get our, our parents involved using the app. We wanted to get uh, parents in and teach the parents, but that's quite difficult. You know, would they rather watch Coronation Street or would they come into school for an hour and, and learn some literacy? Well, this way they can access it while watching Coronation Street on their phone, and that's something we can do with the beacons as well. Uh, again, feedback in many different forms. The resources are all available in one area, then it's all tied to it. Um, and again, that increased um, 
engagement with pupils means you can have improvement in standards. One thing I haven't put on there that we are looking to do now, we want to bring our hallways come to life as well. We've got various photos around the school of our students, which we're proud of. We want to be more, make them proud of it as well. We're going to bring we can put beacons on those photos and those students are then going to tell other students about what's going on in school. It could be they're educating students. All right, okay, let me tell you about constructing a bar chart. Let me tell you about what's going on in PE right now. So it's going to make the school more interactive and a, and a nicer place to be. And really. I think that's another big impact in the long term. So um, in terms of the future and the possibilities, they are endless. And I'll hand you back to Simon now. We can talk a little bit more. But please come down to the stand today on seven, stand 17 and I can tell you and show you in detail what we're doing with the app and what we're doing with the beacons. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rhys. Um, obviously, it's, it's difficult to, to show and talk about impact in, in such a short space of time. So, like Rhys said, please come down to the stand. Uh, we'd be more than happy to, to talk to you about all four products we have. Um, if I'm honest, I'm, very, I'm extremely proud of what the school has done because I always say this. I said this as a head teacher. I say it on talks I do. I say it now as a company director. There is no magic dust in the back of an iPad. There is no magic dust in the back of an Android device. There's no magic dust in the back of any technology. In education, teachers hold the magic dust, and they always will do. So someone like Reese, who's adopted this, has thought creatively around the uses and its impact, has made it work. Because you guys will know, if, you, if, if you're from an education sector, that schools have gone out and bought a huge amount, a massive investment over the last five years. Uh, and I would say 60% of that is currently not having the impact it should have. And that's for a variety of reasons. But the opportunity for Wales to get it right is, is huge. Uh, and schools like Risa are using the, the technology effectively. It has to come back to teacher learning. It has to. So a couple of the other the clients I mentioned. Um, we're sort of solving problems for them, if you like. But Jen Library. Um, so Helen Pridimo was going to present. Yeah, she is my wife. Uh, which would have been a bit awkward, perhaps, if she had come to present. But she's the manager there. So I had to do a freebie for Helen. Um, they were finding that, especially with teenagers, hard to reach teenagers, get them into the library. So increasing footfall into the library physically. Because um, teenagers today will stream music, they'll download ebooks, so on and so forth. So through the Beacon technology, we've, in, we've used some uh, teenagers from local uh, comprehensive schools in Bajent. They've created content to go into the Beacons and into the app. But through the application, our teenager or any child or anybody can actually join the library through the app can actually download um, e-magazines, can download e-books, can stream music through the application. So they had data and stats on the back of that has gone through the roof as a result of using something cleverly. So it doesn't essentially matter if the teenager physically comes through those doors, but their data, going back to Welsh Government and footfall and everything else, is, is fantastic. Um, the other one I want to talk very briefly about is uh, Dufferin Taff School Gymnasium. Um, if you have got a chance to visit that, if you're, if, you're, if you're from an education background, please do. As a gentleman called Graham Evans, uh, ex-rugby uh, player, back in the good old days of first-class rugby. Uh, and Graham actually hand-built this gym himself. He holds the patents for all the, uh, the different equipment in there, and it's, it's, it's incredible. It's a literacy and numeracy gym. Absolutely brilliant. Um, two of his most recent success stories would be Mike Phillips and um, Jonathan Davis. Obviously, both British Lions, and they go back there regularly. But what Graham's done, um, so using the equipment in there, using beacons in the gym, for different stations in the gymnasium, as part of their Welsh back, as part of their BTEC and their GCSE work, the students create the content to go into the beacons. So they create the how to do videos, they create all the, the maths that um, Reese was alluding to. So it is part of their digital competency skill set. So it isn't just something the school has bought and put on the wall, it's something which they have to create and craft with him. And that's the secret of this, really. We provide the training for students and for leaders of this back in the schools or council buildings or organisations or football stadiums. We provide the, the training for you to populate them yourselves. So we're not a company you come in and say you're going to cost you £10,000 a year to keep giving us content and we'll do it. It's about putting it in place, empowering you and training you. And for schools, obviously, that's key. So... That's probably the shortest I've ever spoken on any keynote event. And those of you who've heard me before know I can talk underwater. So please come down and visit us on our stand. We're here all afternoon, stand 17. We're doing lots of good work, uh, not only across Wales. We do work with consortiums and local authorities across Wales. We've got a wonderful two-year programme in Neath Talbot, working with three comprehensives who are going to form the new super school uh, and 11 primaries. And that's an extremely successful programme, working very closely with the IT team there as well. 
Um, we have contracts out in Jersey with the Jersey government. We work across all their schools. Say most, most consortias in Wales. Uh, we were out in Guernsey last week to do some work in the Middle East. Um, so since we started the company, it is a success story for Wales as well. We've gone from three of us initially to employing 10 people in just under a year. We've got 15 consultants across the UK. So if you want to find out more, please come down and have a chat with us. Um, the four products we, we've talked about very lightly, one in detail, we can give you more information uh, about. Stand 17 and have a lovely day. Thank you.